Hello and welcome back to another edition of Jump To It for Irish Racing, where in today's show we're going to be previewing six feature races from the weekend, action from the Curra and HQ Newmarket as well. Plenty of interesting races to discuss and with me as always we have Ed Quigley on board and also Stephen Harris. Stephen, I'll start with you, you've had a couple of weeks off, how was your holiday and also how much racing have you managed to enjoy and actually take note of while you've been away? Yeah, I haven't missed a race, Joe, but obviously yeah, you're watching it on sort of streams rather than uh, on the racing channels. So I do feel a little bit out of touch, but it's good to get back. It, it feels like it's dark in the mornings. It's got cold. The rain started to come. It feels like we should be switching over to the jumps fairly soon, but we've still got um, a pretty cracking weekend of action this weekend on the flat to get through first. Absolutely. Of course, yeah, our jumps preview will be coming very soon. Uh, Ed, also just uh, welcome you to the show. How have you been this week? Yeah, good. Thanks, Joe. As you say, busy, but I mean, the focus still on the, the flat at the moment and it's a, a brilliant Cambridgeshire meeting, uh, some high class horses on display, lots of classic clues. And but we've seen lots of uh, fascinating horses this week, haven't we? With a view to next year's classics, obviously, Sakir in the Mill Reef not long ago was excellent. There's rumours he could go to the Dewhurst next, uh, along with the probably the horse that stood out for me this week was Nostrum of Sir Michael Stout winning at headquarters uh, for such an inexperienced type you know you don't normally go overboard with a Sir Michael Stout two-year-old crop uh, well, that ball's powered to success under Ryan Moore and there's a uh, they're not ruling out a chance he could run in the Dewhurst as well so yeah mine's still on the flat but uh, as always it never switches off from the jumps mm -hmm. does it uh, Joe Chepstow not that far away at all now for the uh, inverted commas official jump season opener Oh, not long now, as ever, uh, Ed. Right, let's crack on then, chaps. Let's get stuck into the very first race we're going to look at. Is that the Curra and is the 135? Uh, so, first of all, we've got Aidan O'Brien has won this race for the last 11 years in a row. And obviously, he's got the first two in the head of the betting as well. Uh, so, Ed, just take us through your assessment of this. I mean, obviously, it should be another win for Aidan O'Brien, but can you see it going any other way? Uh, yeah, it should be. I think you're spot on. I mean, Adelaide River... Um, sets a pretty good standard in terms of those that you know officially rated 106. Uh, it's a fair level coming into this for this uh, Australia Colt who won nicely on debut and then uh, went to Longchamp last time out on soft ground uh, and, and ran a pretty good race. It has to be said when met by Kubrick uh, was three quarter length behind on that occasion. Obviously, reopposes that rival uh, here today. It looks to be. Again, I mean, that's a remarkable record as you flag up there, uh, Joe. It looks to be between the O'Brien two. I mean, continuous. Again, a totally unexposed sort. One of Curra made them uh, over seven furlongs on debut. Uh, I thought looked a bit of a galloper. So with that in mind, I think coming up to a mile here will suit that individual. I'm not sure there's probably going to be that much between the two of them, if you see what I'm saying. And uh, the others in here do look a little bit exposed, don't they? Like the likes of Young Ireland uh, for the Jim Bolger team. Pivotal triggers obviously held uh, by Adelaide River for their meeting last time out. Lakota 7, uh, perhaps there's a little bit to find. So, yeah, all in all, uh, it, it's a no-bet race for me. It'd be a kind of watch a brief with uh, next year's kind of middle distance races in mind. But, um, it, yeah, it wouldn't shock me if it went to either the O'Brien 2 here. And, Stephen, anything for you in the Beresford Stakes or is it just what Ed's really summed it up nicely there? No, I think Ed's right. I mean, seven runners. It hasn't got a particularly friendly shape, especially with Aidan O'Brien so dominant. The market will be a great guide here, Joe. It always is uh, to Aidan O'Brien's horses. Obviously, they've got the heavy mob who own most of the yard and they know exactly the time of day. They measure their horses very carefully at home. The riding tactics will be known to those people who play heavily in the betting markets. I, I would imagine the fact that Adelaide River is a proven stayer at this mile trip. Handles cut in the ground which I would imagine is quite possible at the Curra this weekend and ran so well in France last time out. He's a typical Aidan O'Brien. They don't appear till late in the season. They, they run every fortnight afterwards and they keep on improving run to run. And Adelaide River just looks another tough, progressive sort who's liable to get a positive front running ride and be very hard to beat. Of course, yeah, as you kind of touch on there, the ground is yielding currently at the Curra, so that might be a factor, but yeah, it should be... Between those front two in the betting, I think we can't really split them at the moment. But yeah, we're going to move on now to the next race we're going to look at. So let's over to Newmarket in the 150. You've got the Judmont Royal Lodge Stakes for Group 2. Uh, now, Ed, just take us through your assessment of this one. Yeah, disappointed turnout, isn't it? Um, to put it bluntly, uh, just the four here running for you know £71,000 in a Group 2. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, on paper, Charlie Appleby team, 
uh, just uh, almost taking the mick at the moment, aren't they? We were saying off air, I think in the last, at the time of recording, uh, the last 11 horses they sent out, eight of one, of which they had two in the same race on one of those occasions. So, um, yeah, just an unbelievable strike rate, the, the yard have been in. They've been operating at touching 34% since January the 1st. They're uh, around 40% for September. It's just no letter. Uh, oh, clearly, they've got a good stock and they've got good horses, but they're just placed so well. And this Flying Honours, so officially rated 108 on what we've seen so far as stacks in hand here and the market suggests that now look it doesn't always work out like that especially these unexposed two-year-olds in this time of year suddenly it can be one run too many or suddenly a horse could suddenly blossom and improve because let's not forget as you say they are at the embryonic stage of their career but this see the see the stars cult i mean made a really favorable impression at salisbury last time out really impressive winning that listed contest uh last month and you like to think if there is even more to come, um, yeah, good luck to the rest of them in here. So flying honours, I think for last looks was uh, around four to six, though there or thereabouts, and maybe even a little bit shorter now. And uh, yeah, should be tough to beat in a race which I got to admit, yeah, from a, a betting perspective, you you know I can't lie, isn't particularly inspiring. I know, yeah, you uh, Ed, traditionally you are, you do like your long shots, but I'm here with a heavy odds on favourite. I just wanted to get your view on backing those that are at short prices. I mean. Why is it that punters are maybe put off because it's such a short price? I mean, if it's going to have a very good chance of winning the race, surely that is almost good value from a punting point of view. Yeah, I, I get it. I suppose it's like every horse has your price. Like try and do your tissue beforehand before you've you've, you've seen any prices and you, the hype. Get stay off Twitter as well, where you know that <clears> there's horse, photos of horses horses going up the gallops and you know uh, stopwatch celebrities are tell you the third sectional on the eighth part of the gallop has been. The, the, you know the clock has gone and all this kind of stuff and you you can listen to a lot of noise but form your own opinion try and make your own tissue especially on these small fields joe they're, they're pretty good ones and yeah there is an argument isn't it i mean it's what uh stephen would be much more conscientious to this on a day-to-day -day basis you know if you do a tissue for four on a race and in, in your book you make the favorite one to three well then naturally if it four to seven it's a bet isn't it, it, it you know mm. people have totally different ways of approaching these types of things uh to myself I, i'd be taking much more the uh the long-term view i'd be thinking well what can that win next year which is 16 to one and try and sound like a right twitter hipster in six months time when i say i give you a big i told you so when it mm. bolts up in a in a classic somewhere but uh yeah all in all it's different ways of playing it everyone has different approaches a type of race for me especially this end of the season the two-year-olds uh tread generally pretty carefully with a view of what's going to be their target next year what they're going to end up are they going to up a miler are they going to end up a sprinter are they going to be a middle distance horse you know uh, often punters are trying to glean as many clues as trainers at this time time of the year in regards to trip and future plans so yeah I, I as a general rule i tread carefully but yeah Stephen may may beg to differ you may may be all in if he thinks a uh, yeah, if he's got a four to seven shot he thinks should be one to three might be maximum bet but i'm sure Stephen have a, an opinion on that yeah, Stephen, anything to add? Well, well I mean, it, it is a very interesting, the short price ones, by the time you get to the off, the Betfair SP is an extremely accurate guide to their chances. So, for example, with Flying Honours, he could easily be a three to one on chance. I wouldn't be at all surprised. His form of that Salisbury win has been frank. The second their Storm Busters come out and won the Haynes, Hanson and Clark at Newbury in the week by five lengths. And flying on us was 11 to 4 on at Salisbury and one pulling a bus storming clear on very quick ground. Now, one of the things I was thinking about when I looked at this race is, is the ground going to be softer at Newmarket? Pross has put water on. There's rain around on Thursday. Um, I doubt it. Though. The forecast looks dry and it was quick ground on the opening day of the meeting. So everything looks in place for flying on us to win again. Uh, with, with regards to the short ones, when they price these races up, Joe, which they tend to do sort of Tuesday, Wednesday, I think Flying Honours was around about five to four on. Well, that was a very, very fair price, if you can get on. I mean, the if is doing an awful lot of pushing and shoving in that statement. But if you can get on at five to four on, you've probably got five to four on about something that's going to be five to two on. So you've got terrific value for your money over time. But I mean, I don't disagree with Ed, certainly on the flat. Um, on the jumps, I think there's a lot of value with short price horses a lot of the time. On the flat, um, the market and the people closer to the connected will know more than what's in the form book. With jumpers, Ed and I would have been watching them for the last six months, the last six runs. We know which way they want to go, what ground they might want, if they're improving. With the flat, they're much less exposed. A lot of the work is done at home and they can improve dramatically and those connected to them will know more than you will. So 
that the mark the market is a fantastic guide particularly on the flat but but beating it personally i find easier in a way over jumps well really uh, wise words there i think from you from you both so uh, thanks for that quick assessment but let's move on to our next race probably a bit more interesting in terms of finding the winner of the race so it's the for the phillies the uh, six furlongs here at uh, Newmarket 225, of course, the Cheveley Park Stakes. Uh, Ed, take us through this one. I think you said this was probably one of the more interesting races of the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is terrific, isn't it? I mean, what, we got five last time out winners in here, a whole host of top quality group performers, as you would expect, coming into this. You know, say, like the Royal Lodge has cut up to just four. We should hopefully have Tengo in the post here. This is brilliant stuff. Really looking forward to this. After saying I'm... I'm treading carefully with the two-year-olds. Uh, I, I wonder if Aidan O'Brien, we, we perhaps will try to look elsewhere away from the obvious in regards to Meditate. Uh, she's officially the best horse in the field. She brings the best form to the race. And I don't think she did a lot wrong last time out. Uh, she potentially just bumped into that superstar of Dermot Wilds, uh, De Hero. I see he's already favourite for all the, the one-mile classics next year. And I, I suppose if you're going to... Um, put a question mark against Meditate. We'll be coming back down to six furlongs. Is that a problem? Mm. I'm not necessarily sure. It wasn't really a problem when she won the Albany Stakes, was it? Where she had Morge uh, well beaten in behind her. So all in all, I think Meditate will be ridden, ridden forward to make use of her stamina. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't want this to turn into a bit of a sprint for her, uh, if you see what I'm saying. But uh, look, she's a strong stare at this trip. I think she's the class act. She is the best horse in the field. On official ratings, I think she'll take all the beating. But uh, it, it's a really, really good contest. And again, as I always say, this is a proper note, notepad weekend. There'll be individuals beaten here who perhaps were taken off their feet over six and make late gains and give clues for seven furlongs or a mile when they step up into their three-year-old campaign next year or, or even with a view to going to Champions Day or over to the Breeders' Cup. So there's there's more, a lot more than just the winner, even at this time of the year, would be uh, my kind of bottom line on this. Yeah, and I know, uh, Stephen, you've actually got your eyes elsewhere beyond uh, Meditate. So let's take us through your assessment of the race and how you come to your conclusion. Yeah, I, I think this is a tricky race, I must admit. And I, I was looking for something at a bigger price. I thought that Juliet um, Sierra, the top one of Rafe Beckett, um, she's nothing flash. Um, she was second at Newmarket on the July course on her debut over this trip and has won twice since. She won the Dick Pool at Salisbury last time out. It was a bunched finish, but she showed a really likeable attitude under pressure, having seen plenty of daylight up the whole straight. Uh, and I like the way she knuckled down and won. W whether that form is anywhere near uh, Aidan O'Brien's favourite, uh, Meditate, it, it is open to doubt. But I think she's, on, she's improving. She's only had three runs, which I quite like at this time of year. She might be a little bit fresher than most. My, my only concern, I think Meditate's probably the clear form choice, uh, did have a hard race on soft ground at the Curra. A couple of weeks ago maybe won't be at her peak now on much quicker ground a couple of weeks later but that would, that would only be a minor concern i mean aiden o'brien's a genius with these sort of horses you think they've had a hard race and they come back and have another hard race and win again and again and again he he, he freshens them up and gets them ready and he doesn't bring them over unless they're a1 so i i'd respect that i just thought the top one at 10 to 1 might be slightly overpriced she's open to more and rafe beckett has had a brilliant season so yeah, potentially an each way shout there for Juliet Sierra. But yeah, good luck with your pick, Ed. Uh, now we're going to move on to the next one on the card. Uh, new markets of the three o'clock judgment, Middle Park Stakes. Eight declared for this contest. So Stephen, take us through your assessment of this one. Well, the eight runners, I mean, surely we're going to get eight runners. Because this has got a good shape for punters if all eight runners turn up. You're always wary on a Saturday, Joe, that someone from Labrooks or Hills is going to shoot one of the runners so there's only seven left, you know. Or if there's a 16-runner handicap, it miraculously becomes 15, doesn't it? But that's all nonsense, isn't it? There'll be eight runners. It's huge prize money. They're all going to run. And I think the price discrepancy here between Blackbeard and old rival Persian Force is far too wide. I mean, I'm looking now on the exchanges. Persian Force is nudging 6, 7 to 1 on the exchanges. That is an extremely fair price. When they ran the other day in France... Persian Force was sent off a short price favourite and just got mugged in what turned out to be quite a tactical little race. I think a positive ride, Ross Ryan, who's been in the news, he's, he's in the clear. It was a mistake by the BHA. He's back riding again. He's on board Persian Force. And I think a positive ride, try and lead, make all the running, perhaps bag a rail at Newmarket, which is often a big plus on fast ground. And Persian Force could be really hard to beat. He's thrived on his racing 
He's three from six, and I thought he ran really well against Blackbeard. I just can't see why Blackbeard can be sort of five to two, three to one, and Persian forces double that. It's, it's too big a price discrepancy, and perhaps play each way. Yeah, I think it's an interesting one as well. Uh, Ed, you're looking beyond the favourite in this one as well. Take us through your thoughts. Well, yeah, again, I, I mean, looks a pretty deep race, doesn't it? Uh, lots of stacked form. Uh, look, price dependent. Uh, I think if you could get 12, 14 to one plus, I might throw a, a few pennies at uh, horse number eight, Zoology, for the James Ferguson team. Uh, look, it was only a, a Yarmouth novice race, wasn't it, on, on debut? Uh, really weak in the market as well. Uh, I think it might have opened about six to four, drifted out to threes, absolutely took the field apart. Um, there was plenty of cut in the ground that day as well. So if the rains do arrive, or he's riding a little bit on the slow side, I don't think that'd be a problem. Look, this is a big step up, but sometimes just an individual makes a real subjective impression on you. And it's the way the horse did it, considering the market vibes of that, perhaps the, you know, he, the horse needed the run essentially and would come on a great deal for his debut. Uh, James Ferguson said, you know, they're going to have some serious talks about what they do next. Um, they decided they think he's up to having a crack at the middle park stakes. And uh, again, I'm just kind of preying on the fact that you look at the likes of Blackbeard, uh, Persian Force, yeah, Antarctic. They've been on the go for a while now. So you know, they've had five or six runs this season. Um, and at some point, it will catch up with one or two of them or maybe even all three. It may not be today. But I just like that. The, the impression this horse made, yeah, and what it's achieved strictly is kind of two stone below everything else. But hasn't had the opportunity to do so. It's a fresh horse arriving on here on, on the back of a facile success. And as I said, probably will be outside over the field uh, or there or thereabouts uh, taking out what it wants more for luck will be the, the rag. But all in all, I think you can get a double figure price about zoology and uh, makes appeal for me as an each way perspective at a decent price. But a uh, really, really good race. Lovely stuff. All right, let's move on to the next race oh, we're going to feature on the show. So the 320 at the Curra, the Goffs Million, so the richest uh, prize in Europe for two-year-olds on the flat. Uh, so, Stephen, take us through your thoughts on this one. 19 declared, uh, plenty of interest in runners. Yeah, uh, 1.2 million up for grabs here in Euros, Joe, which is about the same as the pound these days. Brilliant race to watch, appalling race to bet in. I mean, it's, a, it's got the worst possible shape, three places, uh, 19 runners at the moment. Most of them have all been running on fast ground, and it's now going to be pretty testing at the Curra on Saturday. So it screams bookmaker friendly race, but it's a great race to watch. Um, the horse I like is Helsing, but I'm not sure I want to take seven to two or under four or five to one in a race of this nature. All his form is on good or faster. He's run three times. He won narrowly and in sort of workmanlike style in the Churchill at Tipperary last time out. You watch that run back, he got a right clump in running and had to switch out wide and knuckle down really strongly. He comes from a yard, yard Jer Lions going particularly well. He's got some lovely young horses. And I thought Helsing was open to more improvement. He's run at the Curra before, albeit on fast ground. Um, if he handles the softer ground, I think he's bound to run well. But I think this is definitely a, a get your notebook ready. It's one for Ed's notebook, this race, because there'll be about six eye catchers in running. There'll be about five or six hard luck stories of horses not getting a run. And they're all very exciting young horses who could be anything next season. And uh, Ed, just looking at the card as well, anyone that stands out for your notebook already at this point, or is it just a case of watch the race and take notes after? Well, I was hoping we'd have our, our good friend Vincent here to, to yeah. describe it all, but obviously he's had a power cut. He's sat there in darkness uh, trying to light a <laughs> candle at the moment. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, we're kind of devoid of that information, really. I know he'd been uh, go through this with a fine tooth comb, but uh, look, it's, um, it's it. God, is it possible? I mean, it really is, isn't it? And uh, going to be juice in the ground whole host of unexposed horses. I mean, unbelievable prize money, really, when you look at it and you should say that. Uh, look, I've absolutely got no idea, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to try and bluff it. I've gone through this. Uh, I go around the roundabout and come back to where I started. So, no, in the words of uh, Duncan Ballantyne, I'm out. <laughs> but uh, as a more general point, Ed, as well, given the prize money on offer, I mean, is this something that the sport needs? It's obviously attracted a big field as well. I mean, what's your take on that? Well, yeah, and actually, I mean, as a general rule, I, I say prize money is overrated in the sense that when you talk about small increments at the top level, you know, when you have mm. a £100,000 race and it has boosted an extra £10,000 in it, well, you know, to be honest with you, I've spoken to some owners, I'm not going to name on here, who, you know, wouldn't even be able to quote you what the prize money was when you get into that level. But when you've got 
ridiculous amount surprise many on here uh i mean especially for some of the small yards that are going to try and tilt at windmills you say you've only got to kind of fall into the places or whatever and you're um i mean it's an unbelievable paycheck for some of these these two-year-olds it really is so yeah i mean it can't be sniffed at and uh, no surprises at all you've got a 19 runner race here so um yeah nonetheless as steven says uh for all the kind of um <clears throat> the, hand, the hand claps for how how good it is in terms of what it does for the game and, and the prize money and the spectacle. Trying to decipher where you go for a, a win bet, um, absolutely no idea. But it is interesting, Holly Doyle uh, comes here with Archie Watson with He's a Monster. That, and that kind of is a case in point, really. Won a Chelmsford race um, on debut uh, in a Chelmsford novice and is now running for a million pound or whatever at, at the Curra. So, yeah, no, good luck to all connections, but um, one I'm very happily sitting out. Absolutely. Fair enough. Uh, so last, last, we're going to move on to the last feature race. So uh, probably the most interesting betting race of the weekend as well. I think, Stephen, you flagged that up for betting expert as well. The 340, the Cambridgeshire Handicap, 200 grand as a uh, prize pool. Stephen, take us through your thoughts of this race. 29 declared, yep. plenty to pick through. Now, uh, just to come back to prize money for a second, uh, Joe, I totally agree with Ed about that. Royal Ascot put up the prize money by a million quid virtually every year. It makes no difference. The same horses would turn up the same multi-millionaire owners have got runners. The way you can make a difference is putting up the prize money from about 2,800 quid on a Monday at Southall to 10 grand minimum every way. That's how you change racing. You don't improve it by lobbing money at the races where the BHA happens to be having lunch on a Saturday. Uh, it's got to come at the grassroots. and That's why racing is in trouble. That's why we've got such small fields and owners and horses are leaving the game in their droves. But that's for another day. Um, back to the Cambridge at 3.40. Uh, we've got 29 runners here, Joe, which means you must play with extra places if you're going to play each way because the terms are bad for punters, four places. If you can get six, maybe seven or even eight places, some of the bigger firms who like to attract revenue on a Saturday, that's where you should play. I like Savvy Victory here. Um, Sean Woods, he's a good place for his horse. He doesn't have many horses these days, but he's put Ryan Moore since Dex for this one. Uh, he's improving handicapper. He's only run nine times on turf, so he's less exposed than some of these. It was only a small field race he won at Goodwood in August, but he came from last to first in quite taking style, I thought. Um, he goes really well on fast ground. I think this bigger field will suit him. He'll settle, get a bit of cover, and hopefully he can come through late. Um, they might split all over Newmarket here, I'd have thought, and hopefully Ryan Moore will be able to find the best strip of ground and weave his way through late. He's about 10 to 1. I think you'd want 10 to 1 as a minimum. But if you can find six or more places, then I think he's a good each way bet. Lovely stuff. And for you, Ed, any uh, fancies in the Cambridgeshire? Yeah, tricky one, isn't it? And the market's cottoning on to the progressive younger legs. Obviously, McJarber's at sort of top of the market. Protagonist's been in flying form. And uh, Savvy Victory, as um, Stephen mentioned, has got some pretty good form going through it. Um, look. All in all, a, a bit of a head scratcher again. I, I'm a tentative pick. I want to keep an eye on the weather here because mm. uh, if the rains did arrive, um, last year we had Jamie Spencer cause a massive upset when he rode a 14 to 1 winner, side Bin Raw. He's been booked onto the Charlie Fellows runner here, uh, in Jazati, who uh, I, I'd say is a mudlark, it's probably a little bit unfair, but I think a bit of juice in the ground wouldn't go amiss, especially according to uh, connections. Uh, a strong stare at this trip. Uh, ran over a mile and a half last time out at Windsor. Perhaps didn't quite get home. But coming down to one mile, one furlongs, they often do go off like the absolute clappers in this. And you can just envisage it now. J.B. Spencer racing the ambulance, um, sorting out his delivery order for the evening for three quarters of the race, not doing absolutely anything, but then looking for where the race is going to collapse, looking for the pace, and then trying to come from with the late rattle. And given this horse has got a bit of a knee action, uh, I wouldn't wouldn't be shocked if there was a, the ground was just riding on the slow side. This is a proper stare at the trip. So uh, in Gisarty, um unexposed, a bit of juice in the ground would be fine. And I do think Spencer probably is tailor made for this horse and tailor made for the race, uh, generally speaking. So yeah, a, a, a small each way play in Gisarty for the Charlie Fellows team. I like it. Uh, Ed, we'll stick with you now. We're going to move on to the tips of the week. You've covered some of your angles looking at the weekend's races, but can you just sum up your tips for this weekend, please? Yeah, indeed. Um, well, in terms of that, we're, we're switching codes. Uh, Market Raisin have got a cracking card on Saturday afternoon. And um, Ben Pauling team have been flying form. So is the Barley Basket. He runs in that, that valuable handicap chase. And uh, I, I think the horse can go in again. Looked really smart last time out. Uh, a fluent round. 
uh, over the obstacles, uh, trip trap ground, everything should be fine. Yard in form. I think the barley basket will take the beating uh, up in class in that one. Uh, uh, my value bet. I think I think meditate is the best horse in the field, and you know I think there was a bit of five to two floating around, which I thought was a a fair price really for for a very good horse. So meditate will do for me from that angle. And then yeah, the long shot, the uh, the real left of field one. I was tempted to put in Jazati in in the Cambridgeshire, but zoology. Um, you're going to get a double figure price around 12, 14 to one um, in in the middle park. Uh, the James Ferguson Colt just absolutely took field apart in the Yarmouth novice in swimming with sharks here. Uh, but that impression uh, was pretty memorable. And so fingers crossed can uh, cope with the step up in class. And if that horse can run into a place at least, then I'll be happy. And fingers crossed, yeah, as Stephen says, we don't get those mystery non-runners come through on the morning and the, uh, the place terms all evaporate. <laughs> oh, best of luck to you, Ed. And Stephen, take, take us through your tips of the weekend, please. Yeah, I think it is a really tricky and difficult weekend. My betting expert nap of Saturday runs in the three o'clock at Newmarket, Persian Force, as long as all eight run, I think really good each way bet. Very closely matched with Blackbeard, thriving on racing, a positive ride from Ross Ryan. hopefully make all the running and fend them all off. I, I certainly think the price is much too big uh, in relation to his old rival. Uh, my betting expert value angle selection runs uh, in the 340, the Cambridge Savvy Victory. Again, I'll be looking to play each way with extra places. Ryan Moore booked, really taken with his small field win last time out. He's improving. He has gone up in the weights. He's up to a career high mark, but hopefully the bigger field, a bit of cover. He'll settle for the first time and he loves fast ground. So I'm hoping that Newmarket misses too much rain. The forecast looks good, so it should be good fast ground. And then I'm over at Haydock um, in the 205. They're a competitive handicap. James Horton, the trainer I really like, um, his incorrigible has been a bit of a standard bearer for the yard among one or two others this summer. Made all the running at Thirst last time out. Really gutsy taking Galloper. And I like front runners at Haydock. If he can dominate under Frankie McDonald, get across, bag that far rail, keep pulling out more up the straight. I think he's 10 or 12 to 1. I think that's a fair price. But it is a very competitive weekend of racing. Well, that's what we want, isn't it? We want it to be a bit more yeah. competitive rather than just uh, simple uh, as ever. But yeah, chaps, thanks a lot for your advice and your tips for this weekend. Of course, if you're watching, please do gamble responsibly if you're going to follow our experts' advice. Subscribe to the channel as well on Irish Racing for more content. We'll be back on Monday with Vincent, Ed and John, uh, sorry, not Ed, Emma and Johnny as ever discussing the weekends and also some hot topics in the world of racing. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching this edition of Jump To It. We'll see you again very soon.